Okay, so today I'm going to be having another little play with my um, spritzes that I made up using my Brusho pigment powders. So I'm just going to give them a little bit of a, a shake. A little bit of a shake to wake. Oh, I'll we'll just move that a little bit more into the middle so we can see what we're doing. Um, and I'm going to just take out I want the lime green, a little bit of turquoise, I want the sea green, and a touch, I think, of the lemon. So I'm using kind of greens, greeny blues, and a little bit of yellow as well. So I've got two pieces of cardstock um, cut to A5. So they're literally it's just a sheet of A4 paper, just cut in half. I am going to be die cutting something out of this once it's done. But just to get some colour into the background, before I do that, I just want to add some of these kind of yummy um, inks that I created using those pigment powders. Now you've noticed in the background I have got some tissue paper, it's actually rice paper. That I've just added a little bit to. So what I want to do is just add some colours and then kind of heat it. Because I know the paper is going to crinkle a little bit. So we'll just get a little bit of heat behind it between each kind of layer. So it'll just give us a nice kind of watercolour wash to those backgrounds. And I'm not bothered about the runs and the drips because like I said it's going to be um, we're going to be die cut once we're done. I'm using the rice paper because once I've actually mopped up with the colour of the rice paper I'm going to keep it to one side for another project, a different project on a different day, not for today. So I'll just give that a quick warm Grab some kitchen roll. I'm just going to lift off, and dab off those bits that are left. Okay, so that's kind of dropped back down again. So let's get some of that lemon into that. So give it a shake, just wake it up a little bit. Get it dried again. Okay, just try and flatten those out a little bit. They're still a little bit damp, but that's fine. And then I'm going to get the turquoise. That will do for that. Okay, so we've done lime green, I think. Can't, did I actually do lime green on there? We must have done. So I'm going to grab um, the sandstone. Where's that sandstone colour? Orange, yellow, okay. Did I not put it away? No, I didn't put it away. Give that a shake. And then I'm going to lift off. I'm going to add some sprinkles. A bit of a dribble there, that's okay. Remember, I am going to be die cutting bits out of this, so that doesn't matter too much and if there's far too much on there I can always just lift it off again. Like with most art journal pages it's 10% doing, 90% drying. Okay now that little bit's dry I've got some water that I want to just now start adding few splatters a 
just to create that kind of mottled look, you'll see it all start to kind of reactivate again. I'm going to leave it just sitting for a second or two for it to kind of start working into the, the pigment. And then I've got two sheets of kitchen roll and all I'm going to do is just lay those over the top which will pick up that loose pigment again now and create those nice kind of light areas in the background. There, you see those lovely kind of white watermarks in the background. And I could do with maybe just a few more up the top there, maybe one or two more there. So just let that sit for a second, maybe one down there. Just lift them up. So this is a great kind of technique for creating backgrounds when you don't really want to create anything specific, but you can just sit and create some nice backgrounds for if you want to do some ATTs later, if you want to make some cards, thank you cards later, you can always do these backgrounds and then put them to one side for another day. Great just to have on stock. Or you could just then stick them under your scanner and you've always got them for later before you do anything else. How cool are they? Okay, so let's get those dried off. Okay, so now that they're both dry, and I've kind of flattened them a little bit, I'm going to use this Sizzix Thinlet set called, I think it's Wildflower Stems 2, from Tim Holtz. And I've already loaded it into my Big Shot, excuse the glare from the plate. And I'm just going to give that a run through. Oh, it's a bit tight. Perhaps I shouldn't have used the shim. There we go. Oh, with any luck, that's cut through quite nicely on all of them. Now I'm probably going to have to go back through again. Okay, so after a little bit of messing about with my Big Shot and those Sizzix dies, um, I think these are getting a bit blunt now. They've had <laughs> quite a bit of hammer over the years um, and probably, you know, I passed the best. But anyway, I managed to get that out of um, the sheets that I created with those spritzers. So um, even that is still quite nice to use maybe for another page another time, maybe. Who knows? So I've just spread those out and they kind of look like a, a, a book that you'd maybe do pressed flowers in. <laughs> but no, that's not what I want to do with those. So what I want to do is I want to create this nice double page spread that I've got here. Um, I want to cover with some um, music paper. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab and just tear roughly. I don't really need it to be exact, but just use the ruler, it's easy enough. I'll probably sort that out in a bit. Roughly around that same size. Just a little bit of border underneath and all the way around. So maybe about there. Yeah, I'll probably end up cutting that bit. Oh. Or folding it under. Seeing that Ian's gone off with my scissors. I can't have nothing, can I? Can't a knout. Right, cutting that. That'll do. Alright, so that's going to be 
that way about there. So if we do the same thing with this one up that side, this will be a bit easier to do, won't it? Just to create your nice background. Just flip that that way. Even that up. About there, I would have said. Okay, so I've now got two sheets of music paper that's going to cover that double page spread rather lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just liberally give them a coating of matte medium. This is um, Windsor and Newton Galleria matte medium. Not a hugely expensive one, but not the cheapest either kind of middle of the road, if you know what I mean. Right, now then, have I allowed all my brushes to dry up? Probably, because that's just what I'm like. Let's just spread that matte medium about. Okay, so the excess, I'll just move on to that page for the time being. Um, let's stick that one down on there. That'll do. I'll just quickly go over it. Don't mind if I get any bubbles, don't mind if I get any wrinkles. It just all adds to the rich tapestry that is your art journal. Embrace the imperfection. Now where have we heard that before? Right, let's just swish all that over that side. Probably not the best way to do this, but what the heck. And then, let's see, about there. And then we can use the excess from that side and go over this. I mean, you can spend the time, if you want to, painting the back of your page and then applying it to the page and then going over the top again with your matte medium to get rid of any creases or bubbles or imperfections and that kind of stuff if you want to. Um, you know, it depends on how much you're going to give in to your own personal OCD because, let's face it, we all have a little bit of um, what we're trying to say. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate on the movies and trying to talk at the same time. Um, yeah, we've all got bits where we go, no, I've got to do that right, I've got to do I've got to spend the time. Um, sometimes, because if you depend something in the background like this, um, it's going to get covered up anyway because I'm going to be adding colours to it. You don't really have to spend that much time on it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, it's all down to your own personal um, preference, really, I suppose is what I'm trying to say. But getting confused with yourself. So I'm just gonna give this a quick blast with the heat gun just to dry it off. We've got a few wrinkles, a few bubbles in the background, which is fine. Don't mind that in the slightest. What you'll see me doing while I'm actually using the heat gun is if there are bubbles sticking up, I'll probably just heal them with my hand just to push them down and flatten them, but not put a huge amount of pressure on the page, just to push it down to make sure that it is actually sticking more than anything, not to really try and get rid of those bubbles you can see I'm getting rid of some of them but some of them are staying exactly where they are. Now the one on this page is bubbled or as yeah as bubbled and creased in a kind of tree shape which is cool. Okay so those pages are pretty much stuck down and dried now they're a little bit warm still from the dryer but not enough to stop me from carrying on with the next day.
So I've got some white gesso here. This is white gesso from Indigo Blue, which is a UK based company. Um, they do have a website, indigoblue.com, if you're interested in purchasing some from them. Although I don't get any kickback at all, unfortunately. <laughs> but it's just good gesso. Right, so I'm going to just go over the page. A thin, thin, thin coat. of the gesso just to knock back that music paper a little bit you will still see it once it's dry and I did add a little bit just a tiny tiny bit of water on my brush before I started just to help the thinning process a tad and I'm just going to coat all the way across that page just make sure that I've got everywhere that I haven't missed and then I'm going to do exactly the same, just wet the brush, pick some paint, some gesso up and do the same thing at this side. So for those that don't know, if you're just getting started and not really sure what gesso is, gesso is a little bit like an undercoat, it's a primer. It's a little bit gritty to the touch, very very fine grit. Um, and contains very very small pieces, very very minute grains of plaster which is what gives it that kind of grittiness. Now it also enables you to be able to move paint that you put over the top a lot easier. So it creates a kind of what we call a ground a nice ground for any paint to go on with but it also has the added benefit of knocking stuff back so as you can see there it's knocked back that black music while it's wet you can probably only just see it but when it dries you'll be able to see it a bit better but it will be knocked back into the background Okay, so the gesso is dry. You can see all the shine has gone. You can see that, you can still see the music, but it is just knocked back a little bit. So now that we've got that primer on there, what we can now do is we can introduce another layer of color and we can actually get that moving more easily on the page. So I've found, or gone to my stash and and dusted off something I haven't used for ages. So this is my little collection of gelatos. Um, now these are, so that's metallic. I don't particularly want a shimmery metallic -y one. Um, I'm not even sure what, there's no color on the label that it's come off. So that's blue. So we've got a metallic mint. It's the only kind of green I'm I suppose. If we're going to be doing shimmering, we might as well do shimmering, haven't we? So we've got a turquoise, a green, and let's go the whole hog. And there's a blue there, and another blue there. And a little bit, I think, of that yellow there, which is lemon, which I can mix with the blue to make another kind of green. So I'm going to have like a bluey kind of green background, but I'm mostly wanting blues. There you go. That's going to be my colour palette. Now, again, if you're not familiar what gelatos are, they are a cream pigment. So pretty much the same consistency as a chapstick. So they're kind of waxy and creamy. So when you put them down, they go on quite yummy like that. And they pick up every kind of bump and imperfection in your paper. Just like that. But one of the beauties is that they're water reactive and water soluble. So this is a wet wipe, just a baby wipe. So if I do a little bit of a rub, you can see now that they started to activate on the page and I can manoeuvre 
the colour around the page using that wet wipe Now the beauty is, while this is still wet, you can continue to manoeuvre it and remove colour. So for example, if I don't want any here or I don't want as much there, all I have to do is just take a little bit more off. Maybe a bit there. Maybe some there. and maybe a little there. And that's all aided and abetted by the fact that we've also got the gesso on the page. So let's go for a little bit of a lighter blue. So we'll just go down there. Not much of this gelato left. You don't need masses and masses. Get a clean wet wipe and then let's activate that one. That's a lot lighter, isn't it? A lot, lot lighter. Okay, so let's get some of that green in then. green at the bottom I'm going to use the same baby wipe I'm not going to switch just move it to a different spot and then we can just start to activate that and then blend it in All across the bottom there we go just lightly rub seems to have a lot that's gathered in that area where the creases are so let's just work that out and then I'm going to add some yellow right the way across the middle Another wet wipe. And then I can just gently blend that in. I can always add some more of that dark blue towards the top if I'm not particularly happy with the way that that's gone. So I'll just introduce a little bit more. There we go. What I've always said about using your materials is that you won't know how they're going to work until you actually start playing with them. So even if you just get some spare pieces of card and just have a go, not with the intention of creating anything at all, but just working with the materials that you've got, your resources, your pens, your paints, your gelatos or your um, wax crayons or your pastels, whatever it is that you, you're wanting to use. If you've never used them before, if it's something new to you, the best way to learn how they work with other products that you've got is to just get on and have a play and practice because how else are you going to know otherwise yeah. we've got to put those away now and I want to dry this off okay so they're pretty much dry now there is a little bit of shimmer to them because they have got little bits of mica in that iced mint one at the bottom, but that's okay. Don't mind that at all. So the next technique that I'm going to use on this page 
is with this stencil. So this is one of my new stencils. This is, now you have to forgive me because I can never remember which way around they are. I think that's fretwork one and that one's fretwork two. But forgive me if actually it's the other way around. I can't remember, but I'm sure that one's one. But it's number two that I want. And I'm just going to lay it so that it's got that kind of cross pattern. And I've got another wet wipe and I'm just going to rub over the top and just to start removing a little bit of that colour. So this technique is called ghosting, if you didn't know already. Because I'm sure there are some people out there that are just getting into this. So those of you that did know already, well done you. You can sit there at home going, I knew that. And that creates a nice kind of subtle pattern in the background. Let's remove a little bit more across there. A bit more pronounced there. So this side, we'll take some more off there. And you could, if you wanted to, get a similar kind of effect by adding white paint or more gesso over the top using your stencil but that would kind of make you'd lose the writing that you've got in your under paper or your, your under layers by adding another opaqueish layer over the top whereas this is a little bit more subtle And of course, the more you rub, the more you're going to remove. So you get a better effect with doing this if you'd already pre-gessoed your page like we had done. If you hadn't gessoed your page, you wouldn't get quite a nice result. Look at that. Nice texture in the background. So again, we need to get it dried off. And I'll join with you once we are. Okay that's now all dry. See? So what I want to do before I start sticking on those die cuts is I want to um, add some splatters into the background. So to do that we've got the white gesso. I'm just going to use the paint from the lid. Take a fan brush just put a little bit of that white paint on my mat, add some water. It's just going to loosen the paint up a little bit. And then we can go ahead and start flicking and add in some nice little white splatters into the background. So add a little bit more water. Now what this will do, obviously, as well as make it look as though there's kind of like dust motes floating about, but it also helps to pull everything together. It gives it a kind of uniformity, random uniformity, if there is such a thing. There we go. So let's dump that brush and I'll just lift that up so you can see it a bit better. There we go, kind of just creates that illusion in that background. I'll get this cleaned up, get that dried off, and then I will join with you again once those bits are dry and I've cleared this mess. Look at me, multitasking. Okay, so while that page is drying, I decided that even though I love the colour of these, I wanted to introduce some more colour onto these than what's just there with those greens and the browns and the blues. I want to introduce some reds and some oranges and some purples too. So what I've done is I've just laid them out on some kitchen roll and I'm just going to lay another piece across the top as kind of like a mask. 
and I'm going to grab my spritzer spray which is the orange and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding a bit more colour onto the tops of those so this is the brilliant red And then, let's see, where's that purple? Purple, there we go. Okay, so I need to get those dry and we'll see whether or not we need to add any other colour. I think. And a bit more orange. I don't mind if these go a little bit dark. to take that piece off the top so now we've got that one those which are completely different now so we'll keep those there 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 and there that one but I want to add in a little bit more of that purple color so I'm going to swap that over turn that over and then just grab that purple again and give these another blast. A bit close quarters this time. Okay, so while those flowers are drying, I've brought out my Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous stamp set called Watercolour. I've got three of the butterflies from this collection which I've already added to my stamp platform. I've got a piece of um, old book text, just like this one here, just taken from an old um, book on music and I've got some water um, resistant solvent ink pad, it stays on. So all I'm going to do is just take that over and give these a couple of goes just to make sure I've got a decent kind of impression. Now the reason I'm using stays on is because it's solvent based, oil based rather than water based because I will be adding some colour to these uh, with water based inks later. So drop that on there, go down, give them a big push. There we go, but I want just to make sure that they are as black as I can get them. So I will go over a couple of times just to get a really, really decent impression before I'll be happy. And the good thing about using the stamp press is, is it doesn't matter. You can do it as many times as you want. You'll always get the stamp in the same place each time. with that. Okay so I've got the butterflies and I've brought out my orange and lemon spritzer dies that I've created. So I'm going to take off the top, take a brush, go straight in with that ink and I'm just going to start painting over the top. 
just adding that colour and it doesn't really make any difference if I go outside the lines because I will be cutting these out later. So just add that colour on. Let it soak in. Remember it will dry lighter. You can always go back and add some colour later. You can always add, but you can never take it away. Get some of that yellow. Oh, he's just throwing his brush around. That should do, I think. Let's get those dried off. You can see that it's shiny. It'll start disappear. Our shiny will start disappearing once it's dry. And it gets quite light. Pigments are certainly very, very useful considering the multiple uses that you've got for them. And all I'm doing is just going back in, just adding just that little bit more colour. Start with the lighter colours first. I think I'm going to be happy with those. Just quickly wash the brush, put the lids back on. It's great to have a product that's got so many multiple uses. Okay, so they're obviously dried. I've gone ahead and cut two of the butterflies out of that book text paper, as you can see, because you know, nobody really wants to sit and watch somebody cut multiples of the same thing out. But just so you can see what I'm doing, I will just cut this one out quickly. And I'm not cutting out the antennae because nobody has got time to waste on cutting around fiddly antennae on butterflies. But it's not necessary, you will see them anyway. So, but the beautiful thing about these kind of sketchy, watercolory butterflies that Tim's done in this set is they are, um, they're not precise. They're kind of watery and wavy and, and not exact, which is just nice for a project such as this one. And you can use whatever bits of um, license if you want on where you actually cut. So you could cut a halo around them or cut right up to the mark. It's entirely up to you. There we go. So I should put those to one side now. So there are my three kind of watercolory butterflies. But what I will do quickly is I'll just go around the edges of that one that I've just cut out just to get rid of those raw kind of white edges before they get stuck down onto my page. So I'll just quickly whip around. And that should do us. There we go. Nice watercolory 
butterflies. Okay, so I've brought back the art journal page with all those um, die cut flower stems or whatever you want to call them. So this is the first time you've actually seen them all dry. As you can see, those purple ones have gone rather lovely, the orangey ones. It's just given them a little bit more kind of depth and dimension um, rather than just sticking them down green because I think they would have disappeared into the page a little bit. So what I need to do now is I need to get these glued down onto my page. So in pretty much that same kind of um, position that they are right now, maybe just a little bit more spaced out. Not spaced out man, if you know what I mean, but more um, evenly distributed if you like. More on this side than on that side because I want it to kind of balance but I want it to be a little bit different. So all I've got here for glue is just a small tube of white craft PVA with a fine tip applicator and I'm just going to take each one and I'm just going to add a little bit of glue hopefully there we go and it does dry completely clear so it doesn't matter if some of it just spills out a little bit I'm just going to add some dabs just around just to kind of hold it down and I'm going to go around all of them sticking them all in place like so. So this is going to take a little bit of time and obviously I'm conscious that we've been going for nearly an hour now. About 40, 30 to 40 minutes. So I will just do a couple because this is going to be a repetitive process. And I'll just stick down some glue just rub a little bit on the backs and I'll whiz through all of these it doesn't matter if some of them overlap a little bit push them down and I'll glue all these down right the way across and then I'll be right back like I said you don't have to sit and watch me do this repetitive process on every single one Okay, so all of my flowers are now stuck down. I've had a little time just to grab. This one's still a little bit tacky, but that's okay. So now, just using the same glue, I'm going to go in and just add a little bit to the backs of my butterflies. And I'm gonna stick them down. And I don't mind too much if they're overlapping or going on to the flowers. There's nothing wrong with that. We'll put that one there. And this one for sure. Is going to get stuck right over the top of that one there. So I'm now going to get some pots, some little weights, just put something on the top just to hold them down, just while they grab. And then in fact, let's do that. <laughs> Bit of weight on top of them, give them a minute or two to dry and then I can stick my little quote onto the page. So I'll be right back. Okay, so while they're drying, I've printed off my little quote for my page. I just want to go over with a little bit of colour so that they're not complete stark white. So I'm just going to use um, antique linen, distress oxide. And just add a little bit of colour. onto that, just to kind of take that stark whiteness from them. Now that has actually 
just added a little bit of opacity over the top of the writing and it's just not the black of that writing back to make it into like a kind of dark grey which is different you probably can't really tell that much but it's good enough delicate and subtle enough now I think my butterflies should be dry in place yep and then all we have to do then is just to grab our glue add it to the back of the quote and I'm going to stick that across the stems like so and then on this side a little bit lower but pretty much in the same position there we go so the quote reads let your imagination fly on delicate wings of fancy so I'll let that dry for a second and then I'll be back my two coats are now stuck down rather nicely so I just want to finish off the page to move those clips. I've taken the clips that were holding the pages down because they have started to curl a little bit at the edges but that's okay. So what I want to do is just to add just one of my kind of sketchy scribbly kind of borders. I'm hoping that this pen is going to behave itself. I may have to switch over onto a, um, a different type of pen. I've lost the lid. <laughs> I put the lid down somewhere. I don't know what I've done with it. Probably tidied it away. That's always typical for me. Right, so switch over to um, try and get the pronunciation right on this one for the purists. The Food Day Ball. That's better. So we'll add kind of a scribbly kind of border. just to kind of bring that darkness from the middle to the outside and it doesn't have to be a perfect border either just scribbled border imperfect just to add to it I've got another one there this one looks like it may be running out and I'm going to carry it right the way across the double page following the line of the bottom of the paper all the way to the edge. Let's just see if I can swap that. See if we've got another one. That may have a bit more ink in it. Just double check. Get it rolling. It might be because I'm actually going over the the gelato. It might not be, these pens are supposed to write on almost anything, but like most things, we all have our limitations. There we go. That's working better up there. And sometimes just with the addition of a border, it can just finish it off. might be just what was missing if there was anything missing at all sometimes you don't know if something's missing until you add it <laughs> I think just with that kind of little border all the way around the page I think it just adds to it so all I'm gonna do actually I think I will sign it yeah I will just sign it down here at the bottom and put today's date, whatever today's date is, 3rd maybe, 3rd of June 20, there we go, 
The Roaring Twenties. Or in our case, not so roaring, seeing as we're all locked down still. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I don't think I want to put a shadow, or shall I put a shadow? What do we think? You see, again, do I want a little shadow just to go underneath that? Maybe just a little. Just a real little one. So I'll just get some water. Actually, there's a water brush there, that'll do. And I'll just just activate that just underneath. Nice little subtle shadow. That'll do. And I think I'm happy with that. I'm going to call that page done. Let me just get it dried off first and then I'll be back. Okay, that's all nice and dry. We've just got a little delicate shadow underneath there and I can hear the delicate footsteps of Mr. E. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I bring you a coffee. Oh, lovely. Ground within the foothills of the Himalayas. Ooh. Or the supermarket this morning. All right, fair enough then. Do you want to drop it there? <laughs> He's got it in his pixie milk. Thank you. <laughs> so there you go, page. Come, let me just move that coffee to one side so I don't spill it. Um, there you go, complete art journal page. There you go. That's poetic. Let your imagination fly on delicate wings of fancy. There you go. It's just the sort of message you want for a Thursday evening. It is, isn't it? <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed watching that. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from us for now. See you on Tuesday. <laughs> I'll see you all again very, very soon. Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.